Hi there, and welcome back to another one of my videos on how to use Pokemon Studio and PSDK. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to create brand new types and how to modify existing types. So as always, make sure that your Pokemon SDK is fully up to date. As of recording, the latest version is 0.26.14. And then we're going to click on the database over here and go over to types. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that this may look slightly familiar. You can click up here and you will be able to modify the name and you can click over here. And if you have other language supports, you'll be able to modify those names as well. You're going to notice that's also going to show you the efficiencies. This means it's going to show you what this type is super effective against and what it's not very effective against. So fire resist bug type. So therefore it's not very effective against that type. It will show you your resistances. So to show you fire, flying and rock for the bug type. And it will show you that you resist fighting grass and ground types. Now, if you're curious about all of your Pokemon in your Pokedex and in your database with a specific type, you can actually click on this button and it's going to show all of them. It's in order of your database order. So since Caterpie comes before Metapod, then obviously it shows that first. And it also does this for moves. So if you're ever curious how many moves you have, or if you want to just look at them, you can quickly see all of the types that you have right here. This may be very useful for people that are making wikis for their fan games, uh, as you'll be able to quickly find all of the moves in your game that are of a specific type. Now, if you're curious on how to select a different type, it's no different than if you were selecting a different item, a different move, or a different Pokemon in their respective databases. So you would just click up here and you can scroll down and you can click any of these and it will show you um, the little icon and uh, it'll show you all of their efficiencies as well. So you may be wondering now, how do I adjust a type or how, how do I add a brand new type? We're actually going to cover the brand new type first so that we can show uh, how it's going to look in the type chart as well once you've added a brand new one. So I think a very obvious one would be the light type. This is one of the first ones that I, I think I've ever seen in another fan game is probably the light type. Um, I think it's a very common one. Um, and as you see, you can pick the color here. Uh, you can even use this little uh, dropper and you can click on something if you'd like. And then we're just going to give it the name, the light type. And as usual, don't modify the identifier. I just don't think it's worth it. You're going to click add the type and you're going to notice it has this default icon. Now, maybe in the future, you'll be able to change or modify this icon. But as of right now, this is going to be the icon for every single type that you add. And it's just going to be whatever color you selected. Now, if we wanted to modify this, obviously, because currently it does absolutely nothing, it's not efficient against anything and it's not weak to anything. So maybe it's not a problem, but let's give a Pokemon this type just so that we can use that as an example as well. The first one coming to mind would be like an electric type Pokemon. I don't think there is any light bulb Pokemon. So I'm just going to go with Pikachu uh, just because it's easy. So we'll give it electric and the light type. So you may notice it's going to be in alphabetical order over here. So we're just going to click light and then it's going to say electric and light. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the types and we're going to click on show list of Pokemon and you're going to see Pikachu is now part light type. Now, if we want to modify how this type is going to work or any type, really, we're going to have to click on this adjust type chart button up here and it's going to pull up our brand spanking new type chart. Now at the bottom, it's going to have your types and a little bit to the right, you're going to see the, uh, the new types that you add as well. So you may be wondering which each of these icons represents. So if we look at ice and normal, you're using the ice type to attack. And at the top, you'll notice that it's the normal type that is being uh, defensive or it is like defending the type. If that's kind of hard to grasp, or maybe I just am really bad at explaining it at the bottom, it also tells you how it works. So to make it completely clear, so there's no misunderstanding, um, it'll just blatantly tell you what you're modifying. So we're currently modifying the ice type dealing damage to the normal type. And currently it's neutral damage. If we wanted to change that, we'd click here and it would change it to become super effective. If we wanted to undo that change, or if we wanted to go backwards, you can actually right click. So there's two ways to go. You can go forward with left clicking and you can go backwards by right clicking. So you have the neutral, which is the circle. You have super effective, which is the lightning bolt. And then you have the um, ineffective, which is the crossed out lightning bolt, meaning you're going to do zero damage. And then you have the shield, which is not very effective, meaning the type is going to resist it. Now, as I said earlier, you're not able to modify this icon over here um, for your new custom types or really any of the existing types. You can't modify them, but it doesn't matter because this is all back end. So what you're going to be modifying is actually going to be a graphic in your graphics folder. If we wanted to modify the light to do like super effective damage to neutral type, 
and maybe we wanted to make it uh, not very effective or maybe it's just immune to electric type um, and maybe we'll make electric type also immune to light type just because maybe they're kind of i don't know i don't know the reasoning i don't have logic for it but neutrally ineffective and then we're going to give light type is probably going to be super effective to a dark type and dark type would probably be not very effective to the light type and vice versa like you can you can modify all these things uh i think you get the idea just from this this type chart is pretty easily readable in my opinion and it's only going to get a little bit better in the future i would hope in terms of um, customization but again, this is completely backend. So nobody's seeing this but you. So it really doesn't matter what these icons look like. But as always, make sure once you're done modifying anything that you're going to hit save. Okay. And now we're going to need to go over here and we're going to go into our graphics folder. Don't worry. I'm going to show you in just a second. So we're just going to go into our graphics folder inside of our project. And we're going to go over here and we're going to type in types and we're going to press enter. And you're going to see it's going to bring up the French, Spanish, English, the regular, and again, uh, even more French. Spanish, English, and regular. All right, so what we're gonna modify is gonna be whatever languages that you're obviously supporting. But if we go here, this one is gonna be for the Pokedex, which obviously you are gonna wanna add in your type. So what we're gonna do is gonna open up in uh, paint.net or Photoshop, whatever you use, maybe even a sprite. And you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a blank, uh, a blank one first. Then you're gonna have normal fire, water, electric, grass, ice. Fighting, poison, ground, flying, psychic, bug, rock, ghost, dark, dragon, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it's going to have all the types. If you want to add in a brand new type to your game, you are going to have to modify these graphics. This is going to be the one that's going to be in the Pokedex, and it needs to be at least 16 pixels taller because we're adding in a new type, so we need to make sure that it has an icon for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the canvas size and we're just gonna add 16 to the height, which is gonna make it 320, okay? And then I think taking electric is probably the easiest way to do this. We're gonna, pla <laughs> we're gonna place it down here at the bottom. And then we're just gonna take some of these and we're just gonna remake it. So, cause I'm lazy, I just end up pulling from other graphics. So now that I've put them all here, it obviously doesn't look very pretty. So I'm going to try and make it slightly prettier by pushing them a little bit more in the center here and then we're just gonna fix that up like so okay so now we have added the light type to our pokedex but we still need to add it in an, a few more places so we're gonna go back to here and the other one that i clicked on or the one that we clicked on was up here i believe at the top as yeah you can see it has the light type now so the other one we need to modify is this one this is the one that we're gonna see in the summary screens of our Pokemon. So we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger as well. If you just check the top, you're gonna to know how tall it needs to be. This one's actually gonna be 14. So we're gonna go over here to the canvas size and we're gonna modify this width, or sorry, this height to be um, 280. And again, I'm just gonna steal the electric one for the sake of time. We're gonna place it here and I will be right back when I finish this one. And just like that, we've now added both our typing to the game. We've now added the icon to the Pokedex. We've now added the icon to our summary screens. There's one more place we need to add it to, which is gonna be our battles. So if we just open this back up and we're gonna to go to our interface this time, we're gonna to go to battle. You're gonna see that there's gonna be another graphic called types, which is gonna have a different graphic for every single move in the in the game. So this is the graphic that it picks for your, for your move. As usual, we're going to check this empty space at the top to know how tall it needs to be. This one is 27 pixels. So we're going to resize the canvas and we're going to go up from 513 to 5. So I can't do quick math. So we're actually going to resize this canvas from 513 to... It's embarrassing. Um, 540. I was off by 10 whole pixels. And then I already copied the electric. So we're just gonna paste it here. It's gonna fit perfectly. And I know that this is obviously not the ideal icon. So we're just going to get rid of it. And I'm not very um, talented at all uh, when it comes to graphics. So um, I'm not even gonna attempt to make an icon. Instead, I'm just gonna write on this that, um, or I'm just gonna put a, a red dot, I think. I think you get the idea of what you're supposed to do at least. We're gonna save this 
And then we're going to go back in here and we're going to make um, Thunderbolt no longer electric type. Just for the sake of this, we're going to make it light type. All right. Just to show that everything works. We're going to launch in debug mode in case you are wondering what I just did. I just hovered over this. I just don't click it immediately. I just hover over it. And then we're going to click on debug mode. It's going to launch our game. It's going to update everything for us real quickly. And then once it's done, I'm going to show you how it all looks in game. Here we go. Um, now we are going to give ourselves a Pikachu. So we're going to do s dot mi dot add Pokemon. We're going to use a DB symbol of Pikachu. And we're going to give the level of 20. Okay. So secretly added it to our party. So we're just going to click on Pikachu. We're going to click on summary. And you're going to see it's both electric and light type. It has the little icon that we gave it. He doesn't have Thunderbolt. So we're actually going to have to teach it to him. Um, so it's going to be, I, I don't remember what this one is. So we're going to type in help and hit enter. And it's going to give us just a list of a few different commands that we can use. These are usually pretty common ones. Now to learn a new skill, it's going to be s.mi.skill learn. And now since we're pulling from somebody in our party, we're going to do actors. It's going to do the index of uh, the party. Now my first party member is Clefairy. My second party member is Pikachu. So I'm going to do actors one. And then I'm going to use the DB symbol of Thunderbolt. We're going to hit enter. And then it's going to say Pikachu wants to learn a new move. However, it already knows four moves. Should one be deleted and replaced for Thunderbolt? We're going to say yes. And we're going to notice that right here and right here that it's showing it as a light type move. So we're going to get rid of play nice just so we can, you know, have this light type move. And I'm going to show you the final thing. Now we have to go into battle and if it's in battle and it shows the right icon, then we've done everything correct and we're good to go. So we're going to do s.mi dot call battle wild. We're going to fight a, another Pikachu that's going to be level 10. Oh, I forgot we had Clefairy in the front. So we're going to switch over to Pikachu real quick. Pikachu's play nice on us. But as you see, we do have Thunderbolt here. It does have the red dot, which is like I showed you here. So just to recap where all of these graphics are and where or what they do, um, the one that we just modified and the one that we just saw was in your was in your graphics interface battle folder. This is the one that's going to show when you're in battle. The other one was in our graphics Pokedex. This is the one that shows when you're scrolling through the Pokedex. And then we have another one which is in our interface. So if you just scroll down, you're gonna see down here that you're gonna have types and you're gonna ignore that one actually. You're just gonna use the ones that have the language code at the end. So this is the one that's gonna be shown in your summary screens. Hopefully this video did help you guys. I know that you guys have been asking for how to do new maps in PSDK. Uh, don't worry, we are gonna get to that. However, like I've said, we are gonna go through everything that we can do in studio first which means that next we're going to be going over what we can do with the Pokedex tab. After that, we'll move on to zones and groups as these are kind of put together. And this is how you do wild encounters, which is also kind of looped in with maps. So we'll be getting there very soon. I hope this video is helping you. I hope this series is helping you guys. And uh, I'm, I'm honestly glad to be back and making these. Hopefully I'll have another one soon. Thank you guys for the support and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.